chapter 1.2, exercise 11 through 20, page 102. And this is section 1.2 in the book that deals with determining domain and range. And we're going to carry the cover the odd number problems between 11 and 20. And in the last video lesson, we did the odd number problem 9. And this is find the domain of function algebraic means support your answer graphically. So we look at our first odd number problem, 11. And basically what we're looking for in find the domain is we look for exclusions to the domain. And if we find our exclusions, we know that everything else is going to be part of the domain. So it's basically find what the domain cannot be, and then everything else is the domain. And if there are no exclusions, we're going to have uh, greater than negative infinity to infinity. This would be for, for no exclusions. All right, so in the numerator, we check our numerator. We have, we have a 3x minus 1. Uh, 3x minus 1 is a polynomial expression. So for this expression numerator, there are no exclusions here. And so if we were just taking the domain of this function based on the numerator, we would have this all real numbers thing here, greater than negative infinity, less than infinity. But anytime we have a variable in the denominator, there's a very good chance that we're going to have exclusions to the domain. And so uh, what can we not do in math and in algebra? We cannot divide by zero. And so we can set our denominator equal to zero, and we do that by just transposing quantity x plus 3 times quantity x minus 1. And we set this not equal to zero, but to not equal zero. And then we know that we're going to have this quantity on the left equal to zero if and only if if any of these two factors, these are these two factors. So if we write x plus 3 cannot equal zero. So we write x plus 3 is not equal to zero. And we write here x minus 1 is not equal to zero. And so x cannot equal, solving for x, negative 3, nor can x equal positive 1. And then uh, transposing to a number line, we would go ahead and place our uh, critical numbers here, which would be negative 3 and 1. We have open points or circles at negative 3 and at 1. And then we can just, our domain is going to be everything to the left between greater than negative infinity and negative 3 in between x equals 3 and x equals 1. So there we have that, and then finally to the right, or greater than 1. So our domain, we write as, we take our original domain for no exclusion, we start at negative infinity, and go all the way up to this first discontinuity of negative 3, union, we have negative 3, comma, 1, union, 1, comma, infinity. So that's going to be the entirety of our domain. If we go to our calculator and graph this, which I did earlier, this is our function graphed, and that's what this looks like. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3 and at x equals 1. So we go over here and put in a sketch of a graph. This is our graphical support. Okay, we have x equals negative 3, x equals 1. So we have vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 3, drawn in by the dotted vertical line, and at x equals 1. And just sketching in the graph, we have from negative infinity up to this vertical asymptote, x equals negative 3. And then in the middle, we have this looking thing here, something like this. And then in the right interval between 1 and infinity, we're going to look like this. So we have, now I'm boxing in in blue, our domain interval notation, and then the graphical support below. Next we go to the odd number problem uh, 13. Again, we look for what? Exclusions. And so based on the numerator, x, do we have an exclusion there? Okay, we have 
no exclusions based on the enumerator itself. Okay, no exclusions. But in the denominator, yes, we have a possibility. We know that uh, x squared minus 5x cannot be equal to 0. So if we solve this x squared minus 5x for 0, we have it. So let's go ahead and, and factor this out. The greatest common factor between these two terms, x squared and negative 5x, is x. So we have x times quantity x minus 5 is not equal to 0. And then we know that x x cannot equal 0, nor can x minus 5 equal 0. And so x cannot equal 0, and also x cannot equal positive 5. And so to put this uh, on a number line, we're going to say, I'll put this number on, well, here we have this number line, our exclusions at 0 and 5, here's 5, we have our open point at 0, 0, open point at 5, and then less than 0, and between 0 and 5, and finally greater than 5. And in interval notation, we write this domain as, I'm going to just write this domain, we have negative infinity, comma 0, union 0 comma 5 union 5 comma infinity and then graphically okay, we're just going to get a new graph here we have okay, x over x squared minus 5x. So we put in x squared minus 5x and graph. And we see a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. We do not see any type of discontinuity at x equals 0. So if we just go ahead and let me go back and sketch this for support. So to do that, I'm just going to go We have x equals 5, a vertical asymptote. And it's going to look like this the graph. As the function approaches 5, and then on the right side. But we do not see a discontinuity at zero. To see that discontinuity in our calculator or graphing, we have to go to see a table view. What happens to our table view? Control I. Oops, 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 oops. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, I'm going to go back here. Control back. There we go. I want to put Control T. There we go. And we see at undefined at x equals 0 and also down here at x, at x equals 5. But at x equals 0 we have this undefined and to do that, to represent that graph, we go back to our graph we go here on the graph and put an open circle at x equals 0. So this represents what we call our point discontinuity, I'm going to abbreviate discontinuity, or we call that a hole. So uh, point discontinuity or hole. We also call this a removal discontinuity because if we go ahead and factor this function up here above, if we have x and we just leave this x over quantity x minus 5 
and we cancel by by division, we're going to have left 1 over x minus 5. Well, this function looks very much like like uh, 1, the, the 1, x e y equals 1 over x minus 5. So we call this a removable discontinuity. I'm going to say removable. I'm going to discontinuity, discontinuity, okay? And so this is our domain, which I'm boxing in. Okay, next, we go to the next odd number problem, which is 15. H of x equals the square root of quantity 4 minus x over quantity x plus 1 times quantity x squared plus 1. And we look for exclusions again. And looking in the, in the numerator, do we have an exclusion? Yes. We can't take the square root of a negative number, so we know that 4 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And if we solve for x, if we subtract 4 from both sides of this inequality, we get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And if we solve for x, so we multiply this, or divide, multiply this equation by negative 1, we're going to have x is greater than or equal to 4. But is this correct? In Algebra 2, I hope you learned that when you multiply or divide by a negative number and solve for inequality, you have to reverse the direction of the sign. So instead, it's going to be x is less than or equal to 4. Excuse me. Yes, yes, that's right. And so that's going to be a domain restriction. And then we set our denominator equal to 0. So if we set x plus 1, we're looking for exclusions in the denominator now. And quantity, quantity x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. This breaks down to x plus 1 cannot equal 0. And then also to x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. And then solving for x on this left equation, we have left inequality. We have x cannot equal negative 1. Now on the right side, we have x squared. Uh, Now we just look at this. x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. Is there any number that x can be to get a solution? x squared is always going to have to be what? Greater than or equal to 0. And so if we have a number that cannot be negative plus 1, what is that going to be? Well, that number is going to be greater than or equal to 1. So it's impossible with a real number for x to this inequality to be uh, equal to 0. So we say that there is no solution here, and there's not a exclusion there, since we can't solve the equation. So going back to uh, a number line, our number line, our critical numbers are going to be negative 1 and 4. And we know that x cannot equal negative 1, and we know that x can equal 4 or be less. So we draw, put a solid point of 4, and then we go to the left between 4 and, and negative 1, and then we have to the left or less than negative 1. And so that domain is going to be, it's going to be uh, this one right here. We have negative infinity all the way up to but not including negative 1 union negative 1 all the way up to 4 and including 4 and then we can go in our calculator and graph Put control i and graph we have in the numerator square root of 0.4 minus x. In the denominator, we put in, I want to make sure I get it right, uh, 
We have x plus 1 plus x squared plus 1. And we graph. That's what this looks like. Okay, you have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So we go back, and I'm just kind of sketching in the graph. There's a xy coordinate plane. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. In the, we go all the way up to 2, 3, 4. x has to be less than or equal to 4. So the function looks like this to the right of x equals negative 1 goes all the way down to and stops at x equals 4. And then to the left, we have this thing here. So we have our answer, our domain, and we have our graphical support. Next. We have exercise 17 to 20, find the range of the function. And here for 17, we have f of x equals 10 minus x squared. And if we understand the basic parent function, we know that y equals x squared is the parent quadratic function. And this 10 minus x squared is basically a translation of that function. And what that looks like is this. We take our... Uh, 10 minus x squared, this negative x squared, turns the parabola upside down, and our y-intercept is 10, because if you had x equal to 0, well, your y-intercept is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we would have this kind of looking thing here. So what's going to be the highest point possible for this thing to be? Our range is going to be greater than negative infinity up to x equals 10 and including. And determining range is not as easy as determining domain. So basically, uh, graphing will help you do that. That's very, if you graph this in the calculator, you would see this and it would be pretty easy to determine. So let's go on to problem number 19. We have uh, x squared over 1 minus x squared. So let's just graph this function, see what it looks like. It's not as easily, it's not as apparent. So I'm going to put here control I. So we have x squared. Okay, let's see. Let's see x over 1 minus x squared. And we graph. Let's make sure I have the right thing here. x squared over 1 minus x squared. And that's right. So we graph. And we have greater than negative infinity up to, but not including, this horizontal asymptote at x equals negative 1. And then we have at 0, x equals 0, all the way up to, but not including infinity. So our graph is going to look like this. Range. We have negative infinity all the way up to but not including negative 1, parentheses, union, and we're going from 0 to less than infinity. So that's what this is going to look like here. So I hope this has been helpful to you, and good luck on all the even number problems here. And I thank you for viewing. Take care.